Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you today. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a good week and pray, of course, for your week ahead. And Again, glad to see you here this morning. If you would, let's all stand to page number 40, please. Page number 40. You can sing it, Are You Washed or Are You Washed or however you want to sing it, okay? Are You Washed in the Blood? Page 40. We'll sing the first, second, and last. <clears throat> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? <coughs> blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, good morning, everyone. We're certainly glad that you are here, the ones that are home. Glad you tuned in today. And let's ask the Lord to bless today. Heavenly Father, we come before you and asking you to do that which we cannot. And Lord, that is, uh, you would speak to our hearts in a way that, dear Lord, that we would realize that you are real. And Lord, that you are uh, wanting to bless us and to give us what we need in our lives. And Lord, uh, just pray that as the word of God goes forth and as it's taught, Lord, that it be a blessing and a help and an encouragement and a strength, might comfort where necessary. And Lord, we just pray that your will will be done today in preaching the word this morning and the evening. And Lord, we just pray you give us a good time for we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You may be seated. We'll take our offering at this time. Please remember to pray for our offering, if you will, our tithes and offering, that the Lord would bless them and keep them in your mind. Jim, would you lead us, please, sir? God bless you as you give.
Okay, again, if you would, take our hymnals, turn to page 333, please. Page 333, The Lily of the Valley. We'll sing the first and last verse. Page 333. <clears throat> I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I have nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Well, amen. Thank you, Brother Dave. Thank you, Cindy. We're glad that you're here this morning, and it's always a, a joy to be in the house of the Lord, is it not? And we're glad that you're here today. We'd like for you to continue praying for the ones that we've been praying for for quite a while. And, and so I, I believe uh, most of them, uh, if they're not new, then uh, they are recovering and so uh, we just want to uh, continue praying for them. Some are not doing as well. And so uh, just remember to pray for Mike Hopper, if you will. Henry Reese, pray for him. Uh, Mary Doble, uh, remember to pray for her. And then uh, Wally Garrett's been under the weather a little bit, so let's pray for him, if you will. And then uh, Brother Cross, we'd like for you to continue praying for him and uh, that the Lord's will will be done. And then the ongoing uh, cancer of, of Wanda Clark and uh, Michelle Sims. Uh, pray for them, if you will, and, and that, that the Lord's will will be done in their life. And then uh, the Ratless, uh, pray for them. I think on Wednesday night was mentioned uh, that Gary is going to have uh, uh, foot, something to do with foot maybe a PET scan or something of that nature on his foot, and then Debbie's going to have surgery. And so uh, pray for the Ratless, if you will. And then uh, Vicki Thornburg, uh, pray for her health issues. And then, of course, uh, pray for our church, uh, one another. And, of course, the shut-ins, always remember them, uh, if you will that the Lord's will will be done concerning that, and then also pastor leadership and, and the finances of the church. We want you to continue praying for them, if you will. <clears throat> pray for our country and pray for the president and the leaders of our country and uh, that the Lord's will will be done, and though it will be, and then to pray for the state of Indiana as well. Policemen, first responders, military, and the different ones that are in public service, uh, just pray for them, if you will, and then uh, pray for our missionaries as well. So uh, those are the ones that uh, need to be prayed for. Uh, do we have any new one in this section? Anyone at all? Yes. Uh, unspoken? Okay, how many others unspoken? I'm sure there's others. Okay, the Dave?
Pardon me? Phyllis Witty. Okay, Kim's for cousin. Kim's cousin. Okay, pray for that, if you will. How about in this section? Yes, Becky? Okay. foot surgery for Debbie and so pray for that if you will. Anybody else? How about the phone? Yes, uh, Mary? Blood trans today? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Pray for testing and Two appointments this week for Henry, so just keep that in your mind, if you will, and pray for them that the Lord's will be done. Anybody else? All right. Yes, sir. Glad to have you, David. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we certainly are thankful and, and so glad, dear Lord, that we have a, a God that answers prayer and, and Lord is concerned about us. And Father, I just pray that you would uh, help people that are hurting and under, under health issues, Lord. I just pray you might comfort them and help them during this time. And, and Lord, that's all we can do is just lift up their name uh, before you and and the Lord we know that you are a prayer answering God that you do answer prayer and we just uh, ask that you would uh, be kind to the ones that are in need today and and you would be with them and lead them and guide and direct them and uh, just uh, build them in the faith trusting you and looking to you for guidance and direction in their life and Father, we just pray that your will be done, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn in your Bible to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, and we'll be looking at verse 17 uh, today. And, of course, uh, verse 17 is uh, verse 16. Of course, we uh, found out a little bit more uh, saying that, that the Lord would pray to the Father uh, that he would uh, give you another comforter. And so we, we see that. And you know, uh, as long as the Lord was upon this earth, uh, he, he could not do anything. And, and uh, certainly uh, he always prayed to the Father. I believe we brought that out last week. Uh, where that he always in prayer and uh, knowing uh, that they, uh, he could do nothing but uh, always was the Father. Uh, and the reason why, yes, he was God and all like that, but as Philippians says, he, he just completely emptied himself of all a deity and things like that and become a man. And, and so uh, that's a great example uh, to us today. We're just men and, and women and, and mankind, if you please. And, and of course, uh, we can do nothing. So therefore, now that we have an advocate in heaven, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to him. We pray for him for help. And, and whereas the Father gave us a great example, always doing the Father's will, and, of course, we must do the Lord's will as well. And so the Comforter, and, of course, he said, it would abide with you forever. And then in verse 17, we see uh, uh, the, uh, given a little bit of description 
uh, of the Holy Spirit of God, it says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And of course, we see in this verse of scripture, the Lord was telling them uh, not to expect a visible, uh, a visible person like he was. And of course, that is where we see even the spirit of truth. Uh, comes in. So uh, there is not going to be a visible person like the Lord Jesus Christ when he was upon this earth. But he, as the Bible says here, he is the spirit of truth. And then also he is the comforter. Uh, and, and the Bible tells us that he is sent by uh, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, you can go on in John chapter 16 and verse 7 uh, where it tells us that uh, he, uh, the comforter is uh, being sent by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and of course, we see that uh, since the Holy Spirit of God uh, was, uh, was in the wor- will be in the world, it tells us uh, when he d- will come, he will glorify the Lord. Uh, in John chapter 16 and verse 14. And so we see that uh, he is sent by Christ, and then we see that he will glorify uh, Christ. And, and of course, the Bible said he will not speak of himself, and he will not bring glory to himself, but his, uh, uh, his work is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, that's our responsibility as well, uh, to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see that uh, he is also the, the spirit of the written word. Uh, you know, did you ever think about that? The written word of God is by uh, none other than the, uh, the Holy Spirit of God. And notice, if you will, if you uh, turn to in your Bible, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 and uh, verse 21, uh, well, look at verse 20, where it says, Know this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, uh, you cannot just make it up on your own. Others have to agree with you, as same with me. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, I must be saying the same thing as other preachers are uh, telling you if uh, we are dealing with the truth of God. So uh, people will say, well, that's your own interpretation. No, they cannot be a private interpretation. And, you know, I've heard that over and over again uh, as I went through ministry and things of that nature. Oh, that's only your private interpretation. That's what you believe, and nobody, you know, no, it has to agree with Scripture. Uh, And so we see here in verse 21 uh, where it says, For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man. Uh, You know, people think, well, it's just written by man, uh, mankind. You know, different uh, men uh, uh, that walked upon this earth they were the ones that did it. Uh, had no help, they did it on their own, like Matthew and, and John and different ones like that. No, no. No, we see that it tells us, for the prophecies came not uh, in the old time by the will of, the, of man, but the, holy, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so here we see the, the Bible telling us very clearly uh, that it was written by uh, none other than the Holy Ghost. But, you know, that doesn't mean that man become mechanical. Uh, that means they had their own personality uh, that were involved in it. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, and the Lord allowed that. And, and, but he, uh, as the Scripture says there, but... Uh, God, uh, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and they wrote it down, uh, the Holy Ghost of God. And so uh, not only that, 
uh, but he is going to be the interpreter. Look at John uh, 16 and verse 13, if you will, where it says, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall of uh, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And so here we see uh, the, the Bible telling us he is going to be our interpreter. Uh, you know, that, that's so important to be filled with the Spirit of God. If we don't know what a scripture says, uh, if, the, uh, if we have the Holy Spirit of God teaching us and, and we rely upon him, he is going uh, to give us the interpretation uh, that we need. And, of course, we see going back, into our, uh, going back into our chapter, chapter 14, and notice, if you will, uh, where it says in verse uh, 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things, uh, all things to your remembrance of whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, here we see a qualifying where it says, whatsoever I have said unto you. And so many times people, uh, and, and especially uh, preachers, uh, will say, uh, I, I've got a new revelation or something like that. No, no. No, they don't have any new revelation. Uh, and, of course, uh, it says that he would bring to their remembrance the things that he had taught them or showed them from the Word of God. And, of course, that's the same thing with us today. Uh, if we rely upon the Word of God, then he will, uh, what he is saying to us, uh, then he will teach that truth to us, and he will bring everything to remembrance. And that, you know, uh, that is, I was uh, thinking about this this past week when I was looking at Scripture. And, you know, uh, it's amazing uh, that I was uh, thinking about a certain Scripture and I just simply could not uh, remember where it was at. And all of a sudden, God revealed it to me. He brought it to my memory. He brought it back. To my remembrance, and certainly I was I, I couldn't quote all of it, uh, but I read it and things like that. And so we see uh, the things that we know he is going to uh, call to our remembrance, the things that <clears throat> that he has uh, taught us, and the things that we have been taught. And so it's important to listen to the teaching of the Word of God uh, because. The simple truth is that he will call to your remembrance the things that are so needed in our life. And, of course, uh, the Bible telling us here that he is going to be our teacher. He is the one that ta teaches us. He also has uh, a ministry of reproving. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 16, we'll not turn there. Uh, you can see that on your own. Uh, he has uh, the ministry of, of salvation in John chapter 3. Uh, again, you can read that. And then a restoration in the first, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. You can read about restoration and, and different things like it, restoring the individual, restraining the individual, and different things like that. And so uh, going back to verse six, uh, 17, uh, once again, where we see that it says, whom the world cannot receive, whom the world cannot receive. Notice there uh, it says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Uh, why can't they receive? Uh, well, we know that from going all the way back to Nicodemus, uh, where that, uh, it says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God and different things like that. And so the reason why, he's never been born again, never been born of God Almighty. And, of course, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God 
and you cannot, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit cannot reveal truth to the individual. And so we see that the Bible telling us uh, what was the purpose of this statement anyway that he made. Uh, it was another way of comforting the disciples. You'll remember uh, that they were troubled in heart and different things like that, and eventually we're going to see the end of the comforting. But up until this point, uh, he is trying to comfort them uh, that he is going to be leaving, and, and of course uh, they, needed, they needed comfort from the Lord. And of course it says there, but ye know him, I neither know him, but ye, ye know him. And of course uh, we see that the Bible tells us very clearly uh, the reason that we know him is because he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And so that's why we see the Bible telling us very clearly uh, that he is uh, in, uh, because he seeth and not, neither know him, but ye know him, because he dwells within you and shall be in you. Now notice there's uh, two things here. Uh, uh, when, uh, when the Holy Spirit of God comes, he will be with them. As long as, the, uh, as Jesus Christ is upon this earth, uh, they, uh, he, the Holy Spirit will not indwell them. But when, the Holy, uh, when uh, Jesus Christ goes back to heaven, then the Bible says uh, that he shall be in you. He is going to be in you eventually. When he comes, he'll be with you, and then eventually he will be in you. And, of course, that will be on the day of Pentecost uh, when the Holy Spirit of God comes and, and uh, indwells all believers at that particular time. And so uh, we see that the Bible says, he shall be in you. That means that later on it's going to take place. Uh, this world, uh, this uh, is happening on the day of Pentecost. Now look, if you will, uh, the Bible telling us in verse 18, uh, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And so, of course, uh, we see that the Lord says that he, he is going to leave them, uh, but he says, I will not leave you comfortless. You know, I looked up the word comfortless, and that means orphan. You will remember, if you, uh, what is it, John chapter 13, uh, where Jesus called them little children, little children. And, of course, that brings us up to date. Uh, that when he was going to leave them, uh, he would not leave them comfortably or make them orphans. Uh, and, and, of course, we see that uh, I think when we mentioned the little children, we, we mentioned the fact that they were so dependent upon the Lord. Uh, they, they needed him for guidance and help, and without him, uh, he, would, uh, he would certainly be uh, uh, to the fact that... Uh, uh, that he, he would need no help to him unless he sent uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, we see, and he says, I will come to you, Le leave you comfortless. I will not, I, I will not uh, leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And, of course, we see that the Holy Spirit of truth would come and it would be, uh, be possible for them uh, to have a comforter uh, that would be with them. And notice, if you will, uh, in, in verse 17, again, we see the description of the, of the presence of the Holy Spirit as the, as the Spirit of truth. And, of course, we see that it would be impossible for the unsaved uh, to know anything about the Lord at all. And, of course, we see, but, uh, but the Bible says in, in verse uh, 17, uh, ye, ye shall, uh, uh, and ye shall know, shall know me, uh, and of course uh, know him, and of course that'd be at Pentecost, 
And not only that, but the Holy Spirit would take permanent residence upon the people and in the hearts and lives of individuals. And then, of course, making, uh, making the believer uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, making, the, uh, making uh, the individual the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. If you turn there, you'd see that very clearly. Uh, but then notice, if you will, and we're going to read uh, verse 18 again, and then we're going to include verse 19 and 20. I'm going to complete, uh, read that because I believe that it would help us to see it as a whole. And so it says in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Uh, ye... Uh, Yet for a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And the Bible says in verse 20, At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And so here we see, uh, the, as a looking at it as a whole, we see we are, we learn from this scripture about the Christian life, about the Christian life. And, of course, the uh, Christian life, as you go back and look at that once again, you realize uh, that the Christian life is a supernatural life. Uh, nobody could live it other than uh, a, a, a person that has been uh, born again. He could not possibly uh, live that life. It's a supernatural life. And the life of a Christian, uh, as the Bible tells us, uh, lived by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, when he comes and indwells us, uh, then he is the one that lives through us. And he will tell us and lead us and guide us. And of course, uh, looking at it from another viewpoint, uh, the, in other words, Christ's life is our life in three ways. Uh, he, uh, Christ's life is uh, our life in three ways. Uh, look at verse 18 again, where it says, there is a word of comfort, a word of comfort, and of course the Bible telling us uh, there about that. And we've already looked at that, and of course the Lord was going away, and they no doubt felt like they were orphans, and they felt helpless and hopeless and fearful. And then look at verse 19. Ye, uh, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. And, of course, we see uh, in this verse of Scripture, uh, the Lord's commitment or the promise to them. The promise to them or the commitment that he made to them. And, of course, uh, we see that uh, it says there, as, and yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. The world will see him no more. When was the last time uh, that the world saw the Lord uh, Jesus Christ? It was when he was crucified. He was crucified and, of course, taken down from the cross and placed in his tomb. Uh, that's, the, that's the last time uh, that the world had ever seen him alive. Uh, and, of course, we see that the Bible telling us uh, that uh, uh, the Bible says is, uh, uh, the Lord promised them uh, that he would uh, see them again, as it says there. But ye see me, uh, because I live, ye shall live, uh, live also. Now, we see here uh, that the... The Bible telling us that after his resurrection, he appeared to the disciples and to other believers as well. He made himself known to them. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And so the Bible telling us here uh, the, uh, that how that... Uh, uh, we have seen in the resurrection appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, uh, but we today, how do we see the Lord? How do we see the Lord? Well, it's uh, through the scriptures 
and by faith uh, we see uh, we see the Lord Jesus Christ, and 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 He's just as real to us uh, as uh, as it was back then when the disciples, or it should be, just as real uh, to us as if we were walking with Him and doing the things that He He would have us to do. Uh, but you know, there's going to be a time in Revelation, I think, 22. Uh, where that we're going to see him face to face. One of these days, we're going to see him uh, face to face. And of course, in, in verse 19, uh, these words were added, because I live, ye shall live also. Those were the words of comfort uh, to these disciples at this particular time. And then notice, if you will, in verse 20, it says, at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And of course, we see here is a word of knowledge. He is going to uh, tell them how that he could uh, possibly uh, be, uh, uh, that it says there, the day shall come, uh, ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And so here we find the Lord is in the Father, and we are in him, and he is in us. Uh, you know, what, what do you see there? Uh, a, double, uh, a double security for the Christian. The Lord is in the Father, we are in him, and he is in us. So we see a double security of the believer. There's no way in this world that a Christian can get out of, of, of the Lord. There's no way. And so the Bible telling us also uh, in, in verse uh, 21 where it says, He hath my, my commandment. He that, he that hath my commandment and keeps them, is it, he it is that love me and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest, manifest myself to him. And so here we see his love is to be real. Uh, and his love is to be in us as a Christian. We, we must experience the love that he has for us. He that hath my commandment and keeps them, there is the key to the whole thing. Uh, we have to keep his commandments, and the Bible says we have to have them first, and then we have to keep them. And it says, he that loveth me. And if we love the Lord, then certainly we're going to know his commandments, and we're going to keep them. Uh, it says, he that, is, that loves me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father. And so it doesn't stop there. The Father will love us because we love the Lord and we keep his commandments and we do the things that the Lord would have us to do. And so here we see, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now the word manifest means, uh, uh, looking at the Bible, uh, means to declare by word. Declare by word. Of what the uh, what the Bible tells us, we see that uh, will manifest myself to Him, and all we have to do is just read the Bible. That's why we're going through the Book of John, or where that the Word of God will reveal who Jesus Christ really is. He's a much more than just our Savior. He is a lot more. And, of course, we have gone through a lot of it. And, of course, uh, we see here that uh, keeps them uh, and keeps the word of God. But here's the real test that we see. We hear, but do we heed? We may hear the word, but do we heed the word, uh, his word? Uh, we know, but are we doing his will? Are we doing his will? We may know, 
uh, what the Bible says and all like that, but do we heed it, and are we doing what the Lord would have us to do? A turn, if you will, in uh, John, 1 John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 18, uh, where it tells us here, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth and whereby we know that we, we are, in, are of the truth and shall assure our hearts uh, before, uh, before him. Uh, and, 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 of course, going back uh, where it says, uh, but in deed and in truth, and whereby we know that we, we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt of what the Lord would have us to do. Going back to chapter 14, and notice, if you will, uh, where that it tells us, well, look at verse 21 again, where it says, He that hath my uh, commandments and keeps them, it is he that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And then in verse uh, 22, uh, of course, uh, we see the Bible telling us, it says, Judas saith unto him, not Iscaria, not Iscaria at all, uh, but G uh, Judas uh, was uh, the individual uh, that questioned him. And how would you like to have the name Judas uh, after, after betrayal of the Lord? It wasn't a very good name at all, but here we see uh, he, by the way, he was one of the disciples. He was one of the disciples. And, of course, we see that uh, he is the one uh, that uh, the Bible telling us very clearly, the brother of James, uh, of um, uh, Alphaeus, uh, son of Alphaeus. And so you'll find that in Luke chapter 6. If you turn there, we'll not do that. But we know uh, that he was an upright man. Even though he had a bad name, uh, he, we, he, he made the most of it, and, of course, he did what the Lord would, uh, would uh, tell him to do. And then uh, it says, uh, Judas said unto him, not a scare, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not to the world? Again, I think that's been said before, by others, uh, how can it be? And in fact, if you go all the way back to the beginning, uh, the unsaved uh, half-brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ said, how can you conceal yourself from the world? You ought to be showing yourself to the world if you want to do uh, the work of God. You have to reveal yourself to them. And of course, uh, we see here that Judas was saying something similar uh, to that. How is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Again, manifestation. Uh, what did we say that it was? Declaring the word. And so we see that uh, by doing so, we are going to declare the word of God to the believer, uh, but not to the world. And that ought to be true of us. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of times, and, and I used to be this way but when I first got saved, uh, I, would, I, I would hear things in Sunday school and church, and then I would go and tell the people where I worked at uh, what, what took place. Well, you know, I should never have done that. I should never have done that at all. What I should have done is, is not tell the unsaved about everything, about the, the teaching of the Word of God at all, but what I should have done was just tell them about the gospel and the gospel only. I remember witnessing to people, and, and they would uh, say this, uh, what about this, what about that? And I said, well, uh, let's take care of what, we're, what we're, our subject is, and that is the gospel. And whether they get saved or, or remained unsaved, uh, usually I, I would say, now what is the question that you had? And most times they would say, it's not important. It wasn't important. 
what they were trying to do was get me off of the gospel and things like that. But we must need to just keep on on the subject and, and just tell them, well, we'll take care of that later. Or maybe I, uh, you don't know, just say, I don't know, but I'll find out about that particular thing. And, of course, we see uh, uh, the teaching of the Word of God is meant, meant for the believer. It is meant for the believer. It is not meant for the world. The world needs to hear of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible telling us, uh, and of course uh, Judas did not understand that, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 tells us a reason why the Holy Spirit had not yet been given uh, unto them. And so uh, they, they just simply uh, did not know the truth of the word of God. Why is it that we should not give out the word of God to unsaved people. Well, if you turn to Matthew, and, and uh, I, this is going to be our last one, by the way. Matthew chapter 7, chapter 7, and verse 6, where it says, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. In other words, if we tell them the truth of God's word, they won't understand it. And, of course, they will do everything in the world uh, t that they can. Uh, maybe they'll, they'll just uh, say, oh, that's not true, and things like that. Trample and under their feet and, and turn again and, and, and turn against it. And so it's not good that we do that at all. And, of course, the Bible telling us that we, we should just give them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after they uh, are saved, and, and if they're serious, they'll get baptized. And if they're really serious, they will join the local church, and then they will begin to learn from the word of God. Does it make sense? It sure does. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. And Lord, I just pray that your will will be done in our hearts and lives. And, and Lord, uh, we thank you for the word of God. And uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for the ones that have come and ask you to bless. Uh, lead, guide, and direct us in the morning service. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.